I talked about this last time in lecture one, where, again, this is the line, these are the lines that we're interested in right now. We have an open circuit. It repeats itself every lambda over two. If we have a transmission line that is a quarter wavelength long, then our open circuit gets uh, transformed into a short circuit. So again, you know, we have a, a transmission line that's not connected to anything. So this is an open circuit transmission line, and uh, at a point, let's say, uh, A, here we take a measurement of our input impedance, and we see that it's actually a short circuit. So it looks like a short circuit at this point. Um, but in between, where our position is uh, less than a quarter wavelength, and in between where our um, position is greater than a quarter wavelength but less than half of a wavelength, so in this range here, these two ranges correspond to these two ranges, we can see that the impedance looks capacitive within this range and looks inductive within this range. So that kind of suggests that we can make use of these types of transformations and we can create uh, transmission lines uh, that look like capacitors and inductors and make use of that in our uh, matching networks. So for the case where we want to make an open circuit look like a capacitor, um, you know, we let the load impedance go to infinity, we end up with this equation that we saw before. Um, we set the left hand side equal to the impedance of a capacitor here, so we end up with this. And then we essentially solve for, for Z, which gives us our length. Um, you know, we, we end up with this expression here. So if we want a certain capacitance and we know the uh, characteristic impedance of our system, uh, you know, we know the wavelength, we know the, our operating frequency, um, we can use this expression to uh, find the length of a transmission line where um, the transmission line is open circuited, but it's of a fixed uh, length, you know, an intended length. And so the impedance seen looking into that transmission line looks like uh, the capacitor that we desire. So um, uh, one reason somebody might want to do this, uh, you know, it's, I, I mentioned before that it's discussed in chapter one. Um, at RF frequencies, at high frequencies, resistors don't act like resistors, capacitors don't act like capacitors, inductors don't act like inductors. So it, it's kind of difficult to, um, you know, to select a discrete component that is the exact cap capacitance that you need for a certain application. Um, so, um, you know, the the reactance of a capacitor um, over frequency, you know, ideally it would look like this, right? It has that, um, you know, like a falls off like one over one over x, but in reality the the curve doesn't look like that. It actually comes down like this, and after a certain point, the capacitor begins to look like an inductor. Uh, the same thing is true for, for inductors, uh, where, you know, there's the ideal inductor, where this, this curve that I just uh, drew here for the capacitor um, would be an inc I'll, I'll discuss that next. Anyway, this is the equation um, that we would use to, to design a transmission line um, that has certain uh, capacitive properties that we desire. Again, we can do the same thing for an inductor. This time we set the left-hand side equal to the um, the impedance of an inductor, and again, you know, we solve for z, and we come up with a with an equation that gives us um, that puts us somewhere in in this range here.